uh, 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 hey guys, what's up? Welcome to your 11th tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm just kidding, I'm not going to do this whole tutorial in song. Maybe, uh, maybe another tutorial, but I'm not really in the mood this time. So, anyways, in this tutorial, what I'm going to be teaching you guys is how to use functions that require multiple parameters. So, let me give you guys a quick example of a function that might require multiple parameters. If you were making a calculator and you wanted the user to enter two numbers, well, it de it doesn't exactly know what those numbers are yet, so we go ahead and we use these numbers as parameters in functions. So as you can see, instead of just a single piece of information, it might need two numbers or eight numbers or 20 numbers. So in order to use multiple parameters in a single function, let me show you guys how to do that. So let's go ahead and make that program right now that just goes in adds two numbers together. Well, we can't use void because right now it is making a calculation. It's going to calculate two numbers, find the sum of them, and return to the return to us the answer. So let's go ahead and say, all right, since what you're going to be returning to us is an integer, go ahead and type int. And now what am I going to name my function? Add numbers. Simple, easy, pretty clear. So now we go ahead and make our parameter list and body list. Here's what I do before I add in my parameters. I don't know why, but you know, I just do it. So what we want to do is we already know that we can use one parameter by going setting the data type and giving it a variable name such as int x. Well, we know that this function is going to need two numbers. We already did one, so how do we say we want to use another number as well. Well, anytime you use more than one parameter, you have to separate it with a comma, and then you give it another piece of information that it's going to need. So it's going to need two numbers. One is going to be called x, and one is going to be called y. So let's go ahead, and now we have a function that takes two extra pieces of information. So we're going to be giving it two integers, x and y. So now let's go ahead and use those numbers somehow. So what we're going to be doing is let's go ahead and make another variable called answer and this is just equal to the values of x plus y. So say that the user passed in two numbers, um, 5 and 6. Well what we're going to do now is say alright 5 equals x, 6 equals y, so answer equals 11. So once we have that answer calculated all we need to do now is we need to return it and this pretty much means give it back so in order to return anything you just go ahead and write return and then what you want to return well just return the answer so a return value is basically once you make your calculation the final calculation that's what they get back so in main we return zero because computer programs know whenever you get zero back this means that your computer program ran successfully. Well, for this one, we want to return the answer because that means that we calculated the answer, so that's what we're going to return back. So now, when we're using our function, we can just go ahead and print out that value using cout, and then go ahead and write add numbers, and then go ahead and write whatever numbers you want to add. And just like before, whenever we were creating our function, we had to separate these variables with a comma. Whenever we're using um, this function later on in our main program, we separate the values we're passing it in with a comma as well. So 43 is going to be equal to x, and 86 is going to be equal to y. So let's go ahead and build and run this, and check it out. 129. Pretty cool, huh? So what happened is this. We said, all right, we want to print out the return value of this right here. So we can't just go ahead and do this because this is going to go ahead and calculate it, but it's not going to print anything out on the screen. So it actually made that calculation, but nothing's printing out. So in order to print that out, that's why we need that C out to print out the return value of this. So anyways, what we did is we said this. All right, we want to use this add numbers function right here, but it needs two integers in order to work. It needs an x and a y. So we said, all right, you want two integers? You got it. You got a 43 and an 86. Let's make some magic happen, baby. So it took that 43, plugged it in for x, and 86, plugged it in for y, and it stored that value 
or excuse me, it stored the sum of the calculation in a variable called answer. And the answer was like, I don't know what it was, but it took the answer and it returned it back to you. So it says, all right, this is basically equal to 129. So this right here is pretty much just a different way of saying 129. So I'm gonna print out 129. And that is how you use functions with multiple parameters. Um, for example, if you wanted to add four numbers together, it would be the same thing, int x, int y, int a, and B and then you just go ahead and use those values just like before so plus A plus B and then later on when you needed more information 32 43 again why I'm doing this I just want to show you guys that you're not only limited to two parameters you can have as many parameters as you want you just have to remember to separate them all with a comma so whether it's two three or a hundred remember to separate them all with the comma in here and also when you're actually using the function out here. So now you understand the basics of what a function is and how to use multiple parameters, single parameters, you're pretty much a pro with functions now. So once you understand this, you're ready to move on to my next tutorial. So thank you guys for watching, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys later.